morning, everyone. Um, it's great to be here. It's my, my second time here in, in Capital Link, Manhattan. Uh, and thank you, Nicholas, for introducing. Uh, I would like to, to spend this morning talking uh, about uh, some of the cost and efficiency uh, challenges and how innovation might uh, help us. So if I go uh, straight into uh, the main uh, topic here, so I think uh, maritime industries are really facing three tectonic shifts at the, at the moment. And uh, these tectonic shifts are really transforming the maritime industry at a very rapid speed. And uh, first of all, we've heard already this morning about the uh, markets, geopolitics, trade uh, conflicts, uh, increasing uncertainties on the market side. Uh, but I would also like to point out two other uh, really significant shifts. One is on the greater influx of regulations. So we already heard about the introduction of the sulfur cap. But I would also like to draw your attention to the tremendously ambitious goal set by the IMO on the greenhouse gas reduction. So if you think about by the end of this century, which is quite a long way uh, forward, but we will as an industry be carbon uh, free. So that is, uh, you can imagine, a, a truly ambitious goal. Also in 2050, we will have reduced by 50% uh, on the carbon emissions and um, we don't really have uh, the solutions to put that in place at the moment. The third uh, tectonic shift that is really impacting shipping now and uh, probably also for the next couple of decades is on the technology side. We've heard about alternative fuels, but not least the uh, digital uh, technologies that are taking its hold on shipping. And we've already seen great uh, uh, new innovations in that respect, and there's much more to follow. So these, ladies and gentlemen, are three quite important tectonic shifts, and they will continue to impact the shipping industry for the next couple of decades. Now, um, there are some uh, safety-related challenges. Um, if I start on, on the market side, there is naturally an increasing pressure to be efficient. And if you look to the uh, recent issues uh, on the container side, we have been quite concerned over the last few years about the weight of containers. I think now is really the time to be concerned of what's inside the boxes and especially in relation to fire safety. And if you have um, uh, material inside these containers that might cause fires, it's much better to know this before they are being loaded on the vessel so that we are able to have proper uh, measures in place to reduce the fires if sh such fires should break out at sea. Also, if you are carrying uh, solid bulk materials, uh, it's really important to have the time to do proper measurements of the moisture content of the uh, cargo that you're loading. And we know that if you have liquefaction uh, of the cargo at sea, there is very, very little that you can do to prevent you know, really serious incidents. Now, on the fuel side, uh, there is a lot of uh, concerns these days about the uh, blended fuels. Will they be uh, compatible? Uh, will you have issues with the engines? Will you have clogging of filters, leakage of seals? And I think these are all uh, concerns that we have to build up more experience with. At the moment, there is some uh, safety issues around these uh, fuels. We've also heard about the uh, scrubber debate. That is not least uh, very topical these days, and I think it's moved into three dimensions. It's, what, it's the commercial dimension that we already heard addressed by the panel, but it's also uh, a technical scientific debate about whether these open loop scrubbers are indeed uh, polluting the sea. Um, we have done some um, testing together with some customers 
And what we have found so far is that the discharge water from the open loop scrubbers are fully compliant with most uh, water standards uh, that are in force at the moment. Now, we have not studied the accumulative effect in ports and, and you know, inland river systems, but I think facts is really one thing that should add to that debate more than feelings. Then the third dimension on the scrubber debate is naturally a very political one, and we can see now that more and more port states are banning open loop scrubbers, and they are doing that on a very, very thin uh, factual basis. So that is the scrubber debate, commercial, uh, technical for sure, but not least political. Now, if I move into the, the second issue, it's naturally about vessels becoming more and more connected. So when vessels are more connected, we are naturally also opening up for the uh, uh, possible cyber attacks. So to be uh, resilient against these type of attacks becomes increasingly more important. And also the quality of the sensors and the data that is gathered on board becomes increasingly important. And it's quite interesting to note uh, that that was indeed one of the issues with the recent Boeing 737 MAX airplanes that had uh, uh, some uh, problems with sensor data and how to interpret and put uh, actions into place to rectify uh, that. Now, if you look at shipping, it has improved safety records, uh, so that is uh, still okay, but I think it's fair to say that the environmental debate, the uh, environmental concern has really taken a lot of attention away from safety issues in shipping. It's quite intriguing when you look at the data here. This is from the Alliance study, and you can see, first of all, that about 90% of the world trade is uh, supported by shipping. And that is a tremendous uh, high amount. So the importance of shipping in this respect is truly uh, significant. And then the other interesting fact from this study is that of these 94 total losses that we experienced in 2017, 74% uh, came, uh, resulted as of human error. So there is a huge potential to increase this further. Now you can ask yourself why I'm bringing safety so much into the picture. Well, if this doesn't work, if, if you are not really performing on the safety issues, uh, the uh, benefits that can be gained from efficiency and increased productivity doesn't really matter. So safety uh, really matters uh, a lot. Now here are some five concrete proposals how to improve uh, safety in the shipping industry. Uh, first of all, uh, holistic regulations where we always put safety at the core. I think this is something I would be happy to discuss uh, with uh, the IMO representatives later on, but I think we've seen some examples where that has not been the case. Uh, also that we improve a safety culture across the shipping companies. Um, unlocking data silos to get further insights and understanding, and not least increased transparency about incidents now it is uh, more than two years since the Stella Daisy and the report is still not out. I think that is a tremendous waste of time. Uh, barrier management is uh, one practice that has been very successfully uh, applied in both the aviation and the oil and gas industry. So there are every reason to try and, and, and look into these uh, ways to improve safety at sea. Now, if I look at some of the technologies that will be available to the maritime industry going forward, uh, I picked four here that I think would really uh, help increase the potential to improve efficiency. Uh, data intelligence, uh, further access to data and information to be able to combine different data sets will definitely lead to business intelligence. And that could be on you know, the performance of the vessels, the fuel consumptions, but also also in many other aspects. Artificial intelligence is getting a hold now on the shipping communities and to train machine learning algorithm, algorithms to better understand uh, 
some of the trivialities that we are working with is truly important. I mean, at, at our company, we are using this to improve the speed of responses to our customers. So when you have a, a bigger data set, you can really train the algorithms to perform um, much faster than the human being. Now, if I look to blockchain, blockchain is a, a truly interesting technology. It will help us to validate, uh, to monitor, and to increase transparency across the entire supply chain. Now, I think that will be uh, increasingly important going forward as more and more uh, would like to have greater transparency and validation of the processes in shipping. And the last one that I picked is on automation. Now, I'm not talking about unmanned vessels. Now, this is more to how we can use automation to really gain uh, efficiencies on the vessel operation. So, for instance, if you are running a tanker and you have four officers in the engine room, if you are able to connect to the shore side operations, you can run that operation possibly with two uh, chief engineers on board, so a reduction already there of 50% and you can gain uh, quite a bit of efficiency. And also with these, uh, what we call the, um, uh, the hyper um, uh, cyber physical systems where you are more and more using IT technologies on what used to be mechanical systems, it makes a lot of sense to, to look for automation benefits. So, um, what I would really like to, to leave you with here is um, a message that uh, in such a rapidly transforming maritime industry, I think there are really a few uh, key ingredients that will pick the, the winners of tomorrow. Uh, I think it's going to be important with transparency to face stakeholder expectations. It's going to be important with scale to benefit from artificial intelligence and data. And it's going to be uh, truly important to be innovative to make use of these advancing technologies and opportunities. And um, with that, I, I think I will, will close, but I would like to maybe give you an alternative. Maybe some of you know uh, Sting, the English uh, uh, pop and rock artist. And he said that um, it's just too hard thinking about the future, so let's just get on with the past. So that's an alternative to my presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your patience this morning. Thank you very much.